Given the Wiimote's free range of motion, it should be no surprise that a game like Wing Island would come along sporting the use of its system's controller, much like Pilotwing 64 did for the Nintendo 64. Pilot Wings perfectly captured the sense of flight and movement with the help of the groundbreaking analog stick, and Wing Island is seeking to do the same with the Wii Remote. Does it rise to the challenge, or will it leave gamers with their feet stuck on the ground? Wing Island introduces you to Junior, a fledgling pilot who inherits his grandfather's handyman business. Along with his plucky assistant Puffin, Junior and Wing Inc. take on various odd jobs in and around the neighboring islands with the help of his trusty old biplane. Well, his plane isn't all that much help, but we'll get into that later. As far as video game stories go, Wing Island regurgitates a lot of things we've already seen growing up with the medium. Having to take the reins of a family business? Check. Being helped by an accompanying cast of quirky co-pilots? Check. Mission-based flight gameplay? Check. And check. However, story elements like these in a game like Wing Island usually take a back seat to the gameplay mechanics, which is what really counts. Unfortunately for Wing Island, it doesn't fare too well in that department either. The game takes you across several modes of play, including a story mode where you get acquainted with and accept missions from the inhabitants of Wing Island. Here you'll find yourself most of the time, where accepting missions from the local town folk allows you to get ranked and paid based on your performance. With the spare parts you've bought to upgrade your planes, your overall performance will improve in accomplishing missions. Do enough of these missions, and you'll unlock more, and before long, other nearby islands will begin asking for your help as well, giving Junior and his crew even more opportunities for flying and money making. Being tasked to do these missions would be fine and dandy, if only they were more interesting and varied. There's a limit to how many times you can pop balloons, drop cargo boxes, and put out fires without finding yourself itching for something else to do in the pilot seat. Aside from the single-player story mode, Wing Island also incorporates a competitive split-screen mode where two players can duke it out in mini games like Plane Tail, where you have to pop each other's trail of balloons. Gamers expecting to see frenetic multiplayer action akin to something like Star Fox or Mario Kart, however, will be disappointed by Wing Island's offerings. Not only are the minigames uninspired, but the split screen makes viewing the environments a chore. Steering your biplane full screen is hard enough. Having half just makes it worse. Competitive mode is a half-hearted addition that won't get you a lot more playtime out of Wing Island. The only thing more languid than Wing Island's story mode is controlling the planes themselves. Rather than holding the controller horizontally like a steering wheel or using the nunchuck as a guiding apparatus, players control the planes by holding the Wii Remote in the standard remote style and tilting, pointing, or thrusting it as if you were holding a toy plane. This is problematic for a couple of reasons. Tilting, thrusting, and pulling back with the Wii Remote is a strenuous routine and makes for an equally clumsy steering experience. Switching between the plane flight formations is no cinch either. Part of the challenge of the game is using the right flight formation at the right time, but specifying which one to switch to is far too difficult. Though the premise isn't all that bad, poor execution and terrible controls keep Wing Island from taking flight. When leisurely steering the plane in exploration mode feels cumbersome, it's a good sign that the rest of the experience is going to fall flat. And sadly, it does. It certainly opens up possibilities for future flight games on the Wii, but for now, this one's for the birds. <laughs>